So my name is Darren Thomas. I'm the Director of Educational Research Techniques. This is Easier, Practical Applications of Machine Learning Algorithms in R. We're now in Unit 3, Lesson 2, and we're doing our data preparation for our random forest model. So let's go ahead and move over to R Studio. So my code is up here in the upper, upper left-hand corner here. And so we need to run, load some packages here. So in lines 2 and 3, we got the ggplot2 packet uh, library SLR. The ISLR package is going to have where our data set is. The core plot is going to give us a visualization, and the carrot package is going to be used for creating our train and test set. So there we go. Put that in there. Now, the data set that we're going to use is called college. So that's in line four. Use the data function, type in college. Now, just to give you some insight into this, we're just going to type in college here. See what we get. All right. So let me zoom in for you for this purpose, this here. So this is the US News and World Report college data. And so it has 777 observations on 18 variables. So here are some of the variables. Whether the college is private or public, that is going to be our predictive variable. Number of applications, acceptance, enrollment, top 10%, top 25%, etc. Number of undergrads, Number of part-time grads, out-of-state tuition, room and board, book costs, personal costs, percentage of faculty with PhDs, this thing has everything. And so again, just to make sure things are clear, we are going to try to predict if something is a private or a, or a public college based on these various um, uh, 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 variables that are available here, independent variables. You can call them features if you want. And this is going to be called our outcome variable, our or dependent variable, however you want to see it. So let's go ahead and zoom out again. All right, so what we're going to do now is we're going to set up our data partition. So we're going to use a, a function called create data partition. We've talked about this, I believe, in previous videos. And so what happens is that this uh, function from the carrot package is going to divide our data set so that 70% is in train, 30% is in the test. So we're going to go here into lines five and six, press enter, and then for our, for our, excuse me, for our, um, for our training set, we're going to take the college data set and all the rows that are in the four train, um, the four train object are going to be put in the training set. And then for the test set, everything that is not in the four train data set is going to be put in the testing set like so. Now, we can make lots of histograms. You could do that on your own time. We don't have to do everything together here. But we will just make a brief visualization of the, cor of the correlations. And to do that, we're going to use something called core plot, C-O-R-R plot. And we're using it, this is from the core plot package. And so to make this function work properly, you put the core plot function on the outside, then the core function on the inside, college. Inside the bracket, we have comma minus 1. The comma means, okay, take all the rows, but in this after the comma, it said exclude the first column. And because the first column in this data set is a categorical variable, which cannot be shown in a correlational matrix. You'll get an error message. And lastly, we want to make sure that, sure that it gives us the numbers. So we we'll just press control enter here in line number nine. And you can see we have this nice little plot here. Let me zoom in for you a little bit. Okay, so I'm assuming that you're familiar with the correlational matrix. We have to be care careful for the dark numbers, either, either the dark blue numbers or the dark red numbers. Those are signs of a very high correlation, which could be a problem. For example, the correlation between acceptance and applications is 0.94. In other words, they're measuring the same thing. And you wanna be aware of these things because high correlation can inflate your, um, your output values or it can dis disrupt your, your prediction as well. And so these are the things we have to keep in mind when we're looking at this. And so of course down here you can see something between terminal and PhD. So that's another high correlation. So a terminal degree has a terminal degree and has a PhD. Often the PhD is a terminal degree. That's why that's such a high correlation, etc. In terms of negative correlations, None of them seem to be alarmingly high in this particular one, but for the positive correlations, the dark blue ones, it looks like there might be some problems here at times that we have to be aware of. And so just so you know, 
what's going to happen is that we're going to use seven of these 18 variables. We're going to try to avoid the various high correlations in the model, and we're going to use seven of these that, you know, I know from playing with this will kind of work reason reasonably well. And so we will find out what those seven var variables are in the next video. So my name is Darren Thomas. I am the Director of Educational Research Techniques. This is easier. Practical Applications of Machine Learning Algorithms in R. See you in the next video.